Hey guys, welcome. It's uh, 6 a.m. in the morning and as you can see I'm not surrounded with mountains this time but I'm actually on a short holiday in our neighbor country, Croatia. Um, I'm, to be more exact, I'm uh, on an island called Mali Loshin. It's a beautiful island that I visit usually two times a year in pre or post season mostly for spear fishing. But this time I also brought all of my dry plate equipment with me together with my portable darkroom. And uh, yeah, I will try to hurry now and uh, get out of the camp because I'm going for the soft morning light. And uh, later on I will also try to develop the plates in, my, in the back of my camper, which should be fun, so stay tuned. As you can see the sun is slowly gonna pop up from those trees there. And I will immediately get uh, sharp shadows, so I really really have to be quick now, let's go. Today I packed the Intrepid camera together with two Zebra 4x5 glass dry plates. Yeah, I'm finally able to shoot 4x5 because they are locked and loaded in a prototype Zebra dual plate holders that I've been designing for the last two months and now they are finally ready for some first tests before they go out to the market. So yeah, fingers crossed they are not going to be causing me any troubles. These early morning hours are also the only time of the day when it's not too windy. The bushes and forests I'm surrounded with may look impenetrable but as you can see behind me they are full of these beautiful labyrinths that are made out of um, rock walls and they are scattered all over the island. Some of them are abandoned, some of them are still in use. They definitely offer some beautiful photo opportunities so yeah, I'm definitely not done here. Oh no, the sun is already really high up. I have to stop filming and start moving. <sighs> there you go, yeah, made it in time, but I'm still gonna have to move very quickly now. Uh, this is the tree I was talking to you about, or what remains of a tree. Uh, it was once a mighty, mighty tree, but now it's broken down into a million pieces and it's just continuing the cycle and the harmony of nature that's why it uh, caught my attention it basically symbolizes that uh, nothing lasts forever you know just look at uh, this old guy it's incredible isn't it just how many branches are laying around Okay guys, I already set the tripod, I try to set it up as sturdy as possible. Always try to rock on it like this to see if it moves or not. I will take my camera and uh, put it on the tripod. Okay. Moving fast as always. <laughs> there you go. Now both the front standard and the back standard are in place. I'm not gonna be doing any movements with them today because um, I don't think it's necessary plus I don't have the time. Um, so yeah, now I will attach the lens. I will be using, I only have this lens with me on uh, this trip actually. It's a Schneider Kreuznach convertible lens. So it can shoot at 135 millimeters or uh, 235 millimeters. If uh, the boats, both elements are on, it's 135 millimeter, so a wide angle version, and uh, that's what I'm gonna be using for this shot. So, yeah. It's uh, very important that you don't forget to screw in the, the lens board to prevent any uh, light leaks. Then I attach my cable release. and uh, open the shutter 
so that I can uh, focus through the focusing screen. For that you will need a uh, dark cloth or a jacket will do just fine. And uh, I help myself with this uh, magnifying loop. It's much easier to nail the focus with uh, this guy. As you can see now I'm also doing the micro adjustments to get the composition I want. Okay. Should be good. And now, now I uh, focus. I select the, the area I would like to be sharp and uh, I uh, focus that area helping myself with the loop. Okay, now the image is sharp so I can tighten everything down so it doesn't move. Then I um, close the shutter back down. Now I will insert the holder. This is uh, the prototype zebra holder that uh, holds two glass dry plates, two 4x5 glass dry plates. So yeah, it's it's uh, the first proper test today. So fingers crossed, it's gonna it's not gonna have any light leaks or anything similar. So yeah, I'm gonna insert it in like this. I try to be very gentle here so I don't move the, the camera in uh, any way. So yeah, now it's inserted fully. Now I will, um, I'm gonna meter um, my exposure now. I'm using an app called um, light meter free I select my uh, point of um, my point of focus and uh, my aperture today will be f16 because I want the tree to be quite sharp and I really don't want to have my uh, exposure running over a minute where the reciprocity um, failure comes so yeah at the f16 it shows me um, 20 seconds actually 18 seconds between 18 and 20 but I will rather go for 20 this is how the app looks you can see here you select your point of uh, focus or the point you want to your exposure to, to adjust on and you can also select very low ISO here so from one two three five and so on I'm select I have selected ISO 2 of course um, then you select your aperture and down here it shows you the time and it varies from uh, point to point obviously so yeah now I will open my timer on the phone Set it to 20 seconds. There you go. Okay, one last thing to do is to um, pull the dark slide out. Okay. There you go. Now try to be, again, I try to be very gentle and uh, not cause any movements and any shaking of the camera. And we can go. One, two, three. Now I'm keeping this uh, cable release, this uh, shutter pressed in for 20 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Done. There you go. Now I put my uh, dark slide back in. Okay. There we go. Can pull the the holder out now. There you go. The first shot's done. Yay. Um, the second one I will take all the way down there by the sea. 
but I need a completely different type of light for that one. I would like for the shadows to be really harsh and deep, which means the sun has to be really high up into the sky. And um, yeah, uh, I will have to return at around uh, 2 to 3 p.m. Right now it's 8 in the morning. Um, so I will um, pack everything up now and head back to the camp. And you, you are really lucky because uh, you can be transported to that time just like that. It's uh, 1.30 p.m. now and I will slowly head towards the second spot. I'm gonna take my bike this time because it's quite far away. The sea surrounding this island is just gorgeous, so clean and pure. Just like I predicted, the wind started to pick up, but no worries because my second subject is gonna stay completely still no matter what. Arrived to the second location, I'm gonna leave my bike here. Yes. I would like to make a shot of uh, this drift, drifted lock laying down here. Probably doesn't look anything special to you right now, but let's take a closer look. Yes, this is what I'm after. This log is just full of these tiny shells, as you can see here. They are running all along the surface. They attached to it while it was um, floating on the sea. God knows where, where it came from. But I would like to focus specifically on this area here. Because the concentration of the shells here is the biggest. And uh, you can see why I wanted strong shadows. Because these shells have holes in them. And uh, with strong sun there is a really high contrast formed between the outside and the inside. So yeah, I probably won't go for like a proper macro shot like this, but I would rather go a bit wider, something like this. So I will set up the camera now. The sun is in my favor, it's shining as, at its full power. So yeah, I better get moving. For the second shot I used the same lens with aperture set to f14. And the exposure time was one of the fastest I've ever had at only one eighth of a second. Who said that dry plates are slow? There you go, now I also have the second exposure. I'm really satisfied with the composition and the subject of course. I'm just hoping that my exposure and my focus were on point. Uh, also this is really a proper test of this film holder because it doesn't get any brighter than this. Uh, I'm gonna pack things up now and uh, head back towards the camper because I have to figure out now how I'm gonna develop these two plates. So see you guys there. There you go, I'm back at the camper. I was thinking and uh, looking for a bit where I would develop my plates and I think that the trunk behind me is my uh, best choice. But uh, I need to go inside first to see if there is any light leaks and if the place is suitable. So yeah, follow me inside. There we go, not the biggest place in the world, but it should be fine. It's not much smaller than my container darkroom back at home anyway, so I'm used to it. Now the most important part, I have to check if there is any light leaks, so I will turn this light off. Behind me there seems to be no light leaks. 
you can see this uh, red light inside the electricity box here which shouldn't cause any problems but below there is also a green light blinking every now and then so I will just for precaution I will cover this box with a um, dark with a dark plastic bag let's check the doors which I'm the most concerned about at the bottom there seems to be no light leaks oh yeah here it's really bad on the sides there's a lot of light coming in more or less all around besides the bottom let me turn the lights back on what I could do is just uh, cover cover this gap here with uh, black duct tape all around but I think I would rather save on a very expen expensive duct tape and uh, wait until the night falls when there should be no light leaks anymore Sun just went down and I have to get myself ready for the development. I already protected the floor with this plastic bag. As well as I covered this electricity box with uh, this dark bag to prevent any unwanted fogging from the blinking lights. And now I have to prepare my developing solutions. In this box here I have basically everything I need for the development. I brought with me some uh, developing trays. Then I already have a pre-mixed uh, fixer solution inside this bottle. Then I have some measuring cups together with a thermometer because all of my solutions need to be at the same temperature which is 20 degrees Celsius. Then I also have the timer here. And for my safe lights I'm going to be using this headlamp today that has built-in um, uh, red light function. I've been using this light for many times before uh, because back in the days I didn't have my own dark room, proper dark room, so I was developing in the bathroom. And uh, last but not least, of course, is a zebra plate holder, holder that's holding my uh, two exposures. So yeah, I'm gonna prepare everything down here now and uh, see you guys then. Okay, I have everything ready now. I have my developer on the left here my uh, water bath in the middle, fixer and my final wash at the end here. My timer is ready and uh, so is my, my flashlight right here. So I'm gonna jump in and start developing. I start by developing the second exposure for 5 minutes in 8C110 dilution B. I want the second shot to be developed first in a completely fresh and punchy developer that will produce strong contrast. These ISO Zebra dry plates might be slow but because of their ultra fine grain emulsion they by far exceed the resolution of any commercially available film. Plus their slowness gives you much more control when developing. Quality of the plates I've been producing lately is really outstanding. Probably the reason for that is that I coated over 500 plates this month. You can order Zebra 4x5 plates from the link below or contact me for custom size plates. I can make them any size you want. Back to developing. After washing the plate for 1 minute in tap water I proceed with fixing. As you can see while I'm fixing I constantly turn the plate around to see if there are still any milky areas left. When all of the unexposed silver halides are removed, I put the plate in the final wash with tap water for 10 minutes. Now when the developer is exhausted a little bit, I develop the first exposure where I want to emphasize that soft early morning light. Again developing for 5 minutes, washing for 1 minute, fixing until all the milky areas are gone and washing for another 10 minutes.
It's the following morning and the plates have now dried completely after development. And I'm really really happy about both shots, especially the second one which is this drifted log right here. But also the first one turned out really nice, the, the broken up tree. In order to show you the positive image I have to digitalize these two plates now. And the problem is I don't have neither the scanner or a light table. But I think I already have an idea, just wait a bit. I believe I can uh, help myself with my computer, let me show it to you. If uh, I open a completely white blank screen like this and uh, fli flip my uh, computer like that, I can uh, use it as a light table, I can put my negative on like this and then I can just take my phone and uh, make a shot of it. Of course, uh, I will have to do all this in, in complete darkness, so there is no reflections of the glass. I have to say I love everything about this shot. It might be my best so far this year. I like the composition, light and the deeper mysterious meaning of this drifted log that was floating on the sea for long enough that it became home for a small little shells. When I saw the log for the first time it also instantly reminded me of a human torso and that influenced the way I composed the image. Let me know in the comments below what do you see and how do you feel about this shot. I also have to say that in terms of quality and detail I was limited with the resolution of my phone but when I scan this shot details hidden in this ultra fine grain emotion are just gonna be insane. Okay, let's take a look at the second shot now. Second shot also turned out really good. It nicely shows the huge amount of branches that fell of a big dead tree and are now laying around it just like a nest ready to help and fertilize his offsprings. This harmony is the reason why nature is still here after millions of years and why we might be waving our final goodbye very soon. There you go, this was a bit longer and more thorough video. I hope you enjoyed watching as much as I did making it. If you did, please don't forget to press that like button. And I'm already looking forward to reading your response down in the comment section below. Stay safe and catch you guys in the next one. Bye!